What's up, savvy expats? So you guys know, I'll tell you the truth and nothing but the truth about the Philippines. The good, the bad, the ugly, you name it, I want you to be fully disclosed on everything. So with that being said, today we're discussing my 10 pet peeves of the Philippines from my personal experience. Let's go. So kicking off this list, pet peeve number one is a lack of punctuality. Whoa, shocker. I'm sure you already know how bad Filipinos can be when it comes to timing. You set an event at 3 p.m., everybody gets there at 4 p.m. You tell them you're treating them to drinks, everybody gets there on time. That's just the way it is in this country. You're going to live on Filipino timing, aka late timing. In American culture, this is considered rude and inconsiderate of the people around you, but in the Philippines, it's just completely normal. And this leaks into every other way of life. The arrival time, transacting, the pace of life, you name it. So just consider this as a heads up because if you're the type that's meticulous about timing, then the Philippines may get on your nerves. Now, moving on to pet peeve number two, that is the non-existent walking etiquette. Of course, this doesn't apply to all Filipinos, but it's without a doubt a common thing in the Philippines. You're going down the escalator and then you have some guy in the middle standing still on his phone blocking the exit point. You're exiting a building and two people are having a conversation smack dab in front of the doorway. You're walking down the sidewalk and there's plenty of room to your right, but they brush up right next to you. Need I say more? I don't know what it is with the walking etiquette here, but it's pretty odd to say the least. In the US, everybody has a personal bubble and if you don't evade that bubble, we're good. But here in the Philippines, people try to squeeze right next to you, block the entrances and exits, and strike up conversations in the least convenient places. And I'm sure it's not intentional, guys, so I just don't blame them too much for this. It's not that big of a deal. But what is worse is when everyone's walking while on their phones. It's like they're not worried about getting hit by a truck while crossing the street. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just so used to it that whenever somebody bumps into me on the street because they're not paying attention, I don't get mad or anything. I'm just like, just another day in the Philippines. Thankfully, it's not a huge deal and it's also not a deal breaker to leave the Philippines, but it is a pet peeve of mine. Moving on to pet peeve number three, that is when people think the rich and politicians are the only people to blame. This I can understand to a certain extent because sure, corruption here in the Philippines is horrendous, but we draw the line when you're blaming every tiny problem of yours on the politicians. As we saw, the elections here in the Philippines just passed and the new president Marcos was just voted in. Some were overjoyed, while others were devastated. But when I asked my tennis coach who he voted for, he said, no one. I asked, why? And he replied, what difference does it make for me? I'm the only one who can change my circumstances. You see, he has a mentality that many other Filipinos don't have. Many here will blame that president or this mayor on why they're in the position they're in. And while I won't deny that, at the end of the day, I don't care who the president is, you do you, I do me, life will still just go on as it is. Now for my fourth Philippine pet peeve, that is directness equals rude. This is something that I slowly began to discover once becoming more social in the Philippines. I found that being direct, which is completely normal in the States, is abnormal in the Philippines. That if you're the type that's assertive and direct, which happens to be many Americans, it comes off here as unmannered. And even upon interviewing several Filipinos in past videos, many of them told me that many foreigners come off as too blunt. They said that it's quite odd for them to be spoken in a direct manner because they're not used to that. And for me, I don't think it's the same thing. I don't think directness equals rude. And so the reason why this is a pet peeve is because sometimes you do want people to be direct so that there's no miscommunication. Moving on to pet peeve number five, that is assuming to share. There's been times where we order at restaurants and we expect my meal that I ordered is my meal, your meal that you ordered is your meal. And then someone goes, I'll just share with you. All right, it's one thing if you ask to share beforehand, but it's another thing when you're implying to share with me. Because honestly, I'm not against sharing, but I'm also not hugely accustomed to it either. In the States, the culture is that we all have our own separate meals to ourselves, and then also when some Filipinos come to the States, they're just hugely shocked that the portions are so huge, they think it's for sharing. And so usually we have our own separate dishes to ourselves. And if you wanted to share, you would ask to do so. But it's funny when some friends say to you, I'll just share with you when you never offered in the first place. 
So not a big deal, but just slightly odd for me. Now for pet peeve number six, that is when they can't say no or I don't know. On multiple occasions, we've asked someone for directions and though they don't know, they still give us the wrong directions. I don't know about you, but I'd appreciate a plain out I don't know than giving us the wrong place. Or even when scheduling a party or an event, we ask people if they can come and they say yes right away. And then come to find out we get last minute cancellations. So this is something we personally experience. Some Filipinos just can't say no. Moving on to pet peeve number seven, that is crab mentality. Thankfully, this is something that I don't deal with much in my circle, but I know many Filipinos that do. Crab mentality is extremely common in the Philippines. If you have big aspirations, if you're speaking English as a Filipino, if you try to better yourself, people will try to pull you down for that. Some will make you even feel guilty for that. And of course, poverty is prevalent in the Philippines and I think that this mentality is a result of that. Now for pet peeve number eight, that is the loud volume on phones. Oh my goodness guys, T to say that this is common in the Philippines would be an understatement. You're in an elevator and somebody is blasting a YouTube video on full volume. You're having lunch and there's a kid at the next table listening to Coco Melon on full blast. I mean, in most other countries, people are considered that other people don't want to listen to what you're listening to. It's either put your headphones on or lower the volume. But here in the Philippines, especially in public spaces, people will make the volume as loud as possible on their phones. I, I, don't, I don't know guys, it's just a little annoying to say the least. Moving on to pet peeve number nine, and this may shock you, that is not washing hands after the bathroom. All right, this may be something that only I've come across. And please don't get the wrong idea that most Filipinos don't wash their hands because most do. But countless times have I used a bathroom and have seen people walk right out without washing their hands. Man, that's just disgusting. I mean, I've seen friends do this and let's just say, I don't shake hands with them. Please comment down below. Have you ever seen this in the Philippines? Now for the 10th and final pet peeve, that is the constant use of plastic. I wouldn't call myself an environmentalist, but I couldn't help but notice that plastic is used for almost everything here. Even if you're checking out of a grocery store just with one item, it's wrapped in plastic. Or if you look at the vegetable aisles, all of it's wrapped in plastic. And then you walk outside, Soft drinks are in plastic. But thankfully, more Filipinos have recently become more conscious of this in efforts to preserve this island. And so there you have it, Savvy Expats. That is my first 10 pet peeves about the Philippines. This is the kind of transparent and unfiltered content about the Philippines that's so rare to find here because I guess creators are afraid to be labeled as Pinoy baiting or being too negative. But I hope you guys enjoy this kind of transparent content that I'm sharing with you. And I came up with almost 20 pet peeves I've accumulated over the past three years of living here. And so stay tuned for part two of this video. And please note, none of these pet peeves are a big deal and it would never stop me from loving the Philippines. So don't take this as complaining, it's just a heads up from what I've experienced here. And so thank you for watching Savvy Expats and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.